If I were to ask you how did black people end up in America, I think the mainstream answer would be, well, the big white people drove the European boats to Africa, got them some black people, put them on a ship, and then drove them to America so they could become slaves. I think that would be historically inaccurate. Today we're going to be reacting to the one and only Thomas Sowell on the truth of the origination of black people in America. I am Cudwee from the Aporia Institute. If you don't know who I am or what we are, you can check out, check out my Instagram here or you can check out the links in the description. With that being said, let's go ahead and get right into the video. The form in which the story of slavery has reached most people today has been along the lines of the best-selling book and widely watched television miniseries, Roots, by Alex Haley. And I think uh, the author of that kind of confirmed, like, this isn't isn't a really a historical accurate representation of how uh, black and Europeans' relationship was, too. Challenged on the historical accuracy of Roots, Haley said, I tried to give my people a myth to live by. Oh, yeah, he already cited it. Perfect. Contrary to the myths to live by, created by Alex Haley and others, Africans were by no means the innocents portrayed in Roots, baffled as to why white men were coming in and taking their people away in chains. On the contrary, the region of West Africa from which Kunta Kinte supposedly came was one of the great slave trading regions of the continent before, during, and after the white man arrived. It was Africans who enslaved their fellow Africans, selling some of these slaves to Europeans or to Arabs and keeping others for themselves. Even at the peak of the Atlantic slave trade, Africans retained more slaves for themselves than they sent to the Western Hemisphere. This pattern was not confined to West Africa, from which most slaves were sent to the Western Hemisphere. In East Africa, the Maasai were feared slave raiders, and other African tribes, either alone or in conjunction with Arabs, enslaved their more vulnerable neighbors. As late as 1891, it was reported that Manuema slavers had demoralized surrounding tribes, destroying crops, and famine reigned everywhere. Even in the early 20th century, Abyssinians were still raiding other Africans and carrying off slaves. It was 1922 before the British had gained sufficient control in Tanganyika to stamp out slavery there. Arabs were the leading slave raiders in East Africa, ranging over an area larger than all of Europe. The total number of slaves exported from East Africa during the 19th century has been estimated to be at least 2 million. And, and to add on, like, the Eastern slave trade was way worse than, like, the Western slave trade. Like, if you're going to, like, Brazil or America, like, in America, like, they had laws where, like, you had to provide, like, how, and I'm not saying this is, like, everywhere, but, like, they had laws where, like, you had to provide your slaves some housing or food and clothing and stuff like that. And then maybe if you're lucky enough on Christmas, you were provided a bottle of whiskey or something like that. I'm not, I'm not saying that's apply, applicable to every single slave in America, but there were certain areas and stuff like that, that in that which that happened. You couldn't kill your slave or something like that. There were certain laws that prevented you from taking certain actions um, uh, to slaves. Now, if it was, like, an Eastern, like, uh, like Middle Eastern slave trade where you're going to like the Arabs or whatever. Like it was bad. Like it was bad. Like, like they had like animals tearing you apart and like, you know, uh, just slicing you up for fun and stuff like that. Like it, it was pretty bad. Despite the impression created by Roots during the era of the massive slave trade from West Africa, a white man was more likely to catch malaria in Africa than to catch slaves himself. Mm. The average life expectancy of a white man in the interior of sub-Saharan Africa at that time was less than one year. By and large, men from Europe or the Western Hemisphere came to the coasts of Africa, bought their slaves, and left as soon as possible. Even so, the death rates among the white crews of the ships carrying slaves to the Western Hemisphere were as high as the death rates among the slaves themselves. It was only much later, after quinine and other medical measures enabled Europeans to survive where there were tropical diseases, was it possible for them to invade Africa in force and establish empires there. Yeah, so then, like, the whole entire idea of just, like, Europeans pulling up on their big cargo boats and then packing, packaging a whole bunch of slaves and cutting down woods and stuff just looking for them it's like where is my where is my guy at you know let me go like i like i don't think that like conception is necessarily true i think um like based off what i've read and what's going on in this passage here 
um, this video. It's more so just like they realize that they could die. Like <laughs> they could die and they don't want to die. So they just pull up and like shook hands with like the slave trader, got all their slaves and went far as possible and quick as possible. Uh, knowing that like the tropical diseases and the fact that there's a multitude of differing African tribes that try to steal other tribes as slaves and they don't want to be caught in that warfare and stuff like that. Like, I think there was a lot going on in which, like, if I was a European guy on that boat, like, I, I would want to leave, leave as soon as possible, knowing, like, all the mishaps that could have possibly happened. Um, but to, like, add on, like, like, Africa is a huge area of, like, multi- uh, mul multiple cultures, languages, terrains, uh, tribes, war, um, like especially during these times, not to say, this is not to say like every single part of Africa, but like especially like the parts of where there was a lot of slavery at, it was tons of like barbarism. But by then, the Atlantic slave trade had already been ended. During the so what Sol was saying is that like about time like Europeans got medicine and stuff like that to m ensure their survival in tropical from tropical diseases like the slave trade has already ended which is crazy. The era of that trade, Africa was largely ruled by Africans who established the conditions under which slave sales took place. The crew of a slave ship was in no position to defy African rulers and their armies by going out across the land and capturing people willy nilly. The stronger African peoples captured and enslaved the weaker peoples. The same pattern found over the centuries in Europe, Asia, the Western Hemisphere, and Polynesia. Also, I think it's kind of like a funny idea where, like, most people's conception of, like, the relationship between Europeans and Africans is, like, the Europeans just easily raided Africa. And I don't think that's the case. I think Africans, like, during that time, like, d despite, like, the type of weapons and stuff like that, they were pretty strong, like, people. Like, like they knew the terrain. They know how to traverse it. And they knew how to battle. They were very athletic and stuff like that. I don't think, like, all of those, like, attributes were, like, so true with the Europeans. Like, they'd never experienced terrains like, like Africa. Like, Africa had so many terrains and so many differing tribes that know how to traverse those and, and know how to battle and fight all the time. Like, yo, bro, like, if I was a European out there, I like, I wouldn't even have the image of, like, me capturing slaves that easy at all. Like, if it was, like, a, a war or a battle or something like that. Not at all. In the Asa land... The Ngoni and Yao swaggered over and terrorized other tribes. In Uganda, the Baganda made life miserable for their neighbors. And the Nioro and Hima of Anko enslaved Toro women and children. The Tutsi dominated the Hutu in Rwanda. The Maasai lorded it over the Kikuyu and Kamba. And the latter, in turn, held the Indorobo in a kind of serfdom. It was precisely the fact that Europeans, except for the Portuguese, seldom participated in the raids that captured and enslaved Africans that enabled most people in Europe and the Americas to remain oblivious to the traumatic experience that this was. I think another point to bolster Soul's point here is that like, yo, like, like tribes like this definitely had such a strong collectivist connection to their tribe and like uh, culture or whatever. Like you could tell like they had traditions and ceremonies and stuff like that. So like, yo, if you're like infringing on my ceremony, you're tr infringing on my tribe, my, my group, my gang, bro, like we're going to go to war with you, bro. Like, I, I think they had definitely had that perspective as like, they, they held that like, their tribe is super sacred. And like, if you have a different like tribe culture or whatever, it's like, we're going to look down on you because it's like, yo, bro, you, you not, you not doing the real truth ceremony here. You, you're supposed to bang the rock this way, not that way or something like that. I don't know. But like the whole idea is like they had a strong connection to their, their tribe and culture. And you can see that with like their clothing and stuff like that and, and their dances and stuff with some Africans committing suicide to avoid capture and wives being whipped as they tried to cling to their husbands or children. Historian David Brian Davis pointed out that Europeans had little contact with the actual process of enslavement and that as late as 1721, the Royal African Company asked its agents to investigate the modes of enslavement in the interior. Europeans typically saw only the end results enslaved people being offered for sale on the coast. It was much the same story in the Ottoman Empire, where those who bought slaves had no idea what these slaves had been through before. Now, if I were to re-ask you the question, how did black people originate in, in, in America? Like, what would your, would your answer relatively be the same? Um, and I think there's a lot of evidence that Thomas Sowell points to that like, 
I think the main sh- mainstream conception of just white people going to Africa and stealing them it would be would be wrong and actually uh, contrary to histor- historical facts. Um, and I, I don't know what else to kind of say. I mean, I again, if you like what I you heard from this video, I definitely recommend checking out Thomas Sowell. He's great on sociology, culture, and history. So if you like any of that, then I recommend going ahead and purchasing one of his books, like Conquest or Culture, something like that. But with that being said, this has been Cudby from the Apori Institute. And uh, yeah, peace out.